Hello, my name is Lynn Wilson and I'm the Operations Manager for the National Association of Disability Practitioners. We've been producing a few videos in order to support our members and colleagues uh, and I'd like to thank you for the lovely positive emails regarding our previous videos. It helps us to hear that you feel supportive and part of the NADP team because you are part of that team. We have actually asked a few people if there's any particular things that they might need some assistance with and some members are raising concerns about staying motivated both for themselves and their teams. This seems to have been particularly difficult after the Easter break and the announcement of a further period of lockdown. While it may have sounded like a dream and is a norm for many people working alone at home far from the hustle and bustle of your office but this seems to have started to wear thin for many of our members and colleagues. It always takes so much longer to sort out problems when you cannot call a colleague over to come and look at your screen or phone IT and ask them to sort it out. Even the ritual of commuting to work may be missed as it sets you up in work mode. So we've decided to compile some of our top tips in order to make working from home easier and more productive during this period of isolation. And we hope that some of these tips may help you. When I say we, uh, that is a, a mixture of myself and my wife, Glenn, who is a senior clinical psychologist um, who's many years experience working in the field, um, including at Melbourne University, where she was supporting students. Anyway, I'll leave it all to Glenn now and I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, it's Glennis Wilson again, uh, senior clinical psychologist consulting with NADP. Uh, number three in the video series. Um, looking this time at motivation, we're finding there's a lot of queries about maintaining motivation in such unusual and can be, you know, emotional, um, scary even <laughs> situations. So if you're not used to working from home on a regular or continuous basis, it can be difficult to get used to working as you would in the office. The government has advised us we must social distance. So working from home is now the, the norm. If so, you, you lose your work environment, the cues to actually work, social interactions and support that you typically experience in the office. At first, it was natural that practical concerns took priority and probably was an exciting or unusual thing that didn't make you feel too bad. It was setting up a temporary home office, connecting to work net, work networks, getting to sleep in and no commute may even been exciting and pleasurable. There should have been meetings and discussions at work about how to work in this new way before it became a reality. Um, and considering what this means, how do you work now with remote support of students? And with no official announcement yet, um, and some confusion about how long the work from home measures will be in place, Many of us are now considering how to make um, working from home sustainable in the medium or even long term. Um, there's, we may even have to go out and then come back and work from home again. It's a different phase and it involves a different mindset. Change is an interesting thing. It can be chosen or forced on you, but either way it brings anxiety about the unfamiliar, possibly a longing, even grief for losing the familiar and doubt about the new. These are predictable and understandable reactions, but they can also, if they're not thought about and dealt with, they can turn into resistance, denial, resentment and issues with motivation. People can blame themselves, blame management, see the path set up that they had in an idealised way. That was when they worked best, that it was where the real work happened, that sort of thing. All of this is made worse when you're working in isolation from the usual work environment, team support and encouragement. So today we'll look at a few ways you can set up at home, as well as ways a team can function best when working in different locations. Firstly, creating the best work environment you can. Now, not everyone is lucky enough to have a, a room that can be transferred into a home office just ready to go. Um, even those who may not be used to spending many weeks operating in the space, you need to create a space um, which has got lots of light, you've got desk, you've got privacy, 
um, you've got somewhere to go which differs from the normal thing to get you in a headspace for work but um, you may not have a wealth of options um, for terms of location especially if you're sharing the space with family members housemates who are also unexpectedly working or learning from home if you can yes as I said try and set up somewhere with lots of natural light ventilation um, being in a well-lit sunlit area getting your vitamin D actually improves your mood quite a lot and therefore it's important if others in your household are working consider whether you'd find a, a co-working style set up on a kitchen table more motivating uh, if they would as well of course or whether separate spaces could help with concentration Lynn mixes things up she moves to different locations throughout the day she starts in the office in the morning upstairs gets through all the emails the things she has to really think about and concentrate on then moves down to the lounge for some company in the afternoon while she does work that needs less concentration you may need to have a chat about how to best to set this up with your partner or housemate and review it at regular intervals about changes or upcoming events that really require modifications you might be sharing a space but if you've got a meeting on a video meeting having someone else near you might be too much of a distraction well they're going to need notice that can they work somewhere else for that time or take their lunch break or a break of some type flexibility and adapting if you live with others is really important normally let alone under such circumstances but ultimately it's about creating a space that you can feel comfortable and productive in and even a few small touches like plants or pictures go a long way to making your workspace feel more welcoming and help with productivity and the productivity isn't just about not getting into trouble if you want working with a purpose and working getting things done is actually important for us uh, mentally so working and having a successful time will help with mentally handling this new and unusual situation so you need also to prioritize healthy communication um, it's very important if you're used to working in an office where colleagues are a few meters away it can be difficult to adapt to the new situation where holding a conversation is not as easy as just walking those few meters and sticking your head around their door or just standing near them or turning to face them um, if you're sharing a, an office space hopefully managers have set up daily online groups to assist in avoiding loneliness help with problem solving and emphasize that you're still part of a team that's really important in an office there's no doubt you're in a team or part of something um, even if you work alone you're still in a workspace where people are passing where you know exactly where to go to see this person and where their office is you lose that and that's a really important aspect of being at work it helps you set your mindset um, for what you're doing and why you're doing it so hopefully um, you've got a setup where you still feel encouragement praise and constructive that again hopefully was part of your undercurrent of your day at work this could be missing at home unless your manager makes a point of highlighting positive things in videos or phone meetings the low-key consistent positive feedback and comments are best counter to the common negative reactions to the change mentioned before the key to making communications work when operating remotely is to communicate as often as you can through a range of different mediums and although email very much still has its place try not to overly rely on it where possible pick up the phone or use a platform like Skype FaceTime WhatsApp whatever for a video call people differ in what method communication impacts them on most um, there's a lot of people who really don't like talking on the phone but we'll deal with Skype better other people really don't want to be seen in um, here messy um, and uh, not at their best so to speak so try and vary communication and, and work out what works best for you and what works if you're a manager what works best for the different members of your team you may have to have team meetings in a video link up but in your one-to-ones with the team members another method may be best for them interacting with colleagues in these ways can help avoid loneliness or isolation and often helps you resolve an issue far more quickly 
A weekly one-on-one -on -one phone or video call by the manager to each team member is also a good idea to ensure issues raised that may not be in a team situation are raised and discussed. Each member will be seen as a valuable individual that the manager's gone out of their way to specifically catch up with them, not just a big team thing. So you can start your day, another way is you can start your day writing a plan. A lot of people plan their working day or week ahead. Um, and when you're social distancing and working from home, work priorities may have changed significantly from the normal, not be as clear. Creating a plan at the beginning of the day or right after your team catch up will give you tasks to hit throughout that day or the week and will help you feel accomplishment when you get these things done and sent off. Again, it's really good if other other co-workers and management can um, praise or just encourage you to say, thanks for sending that through, that's helped me do this, this and this. That way you get a sense of you are still connected and what you do matters. So it's, that's an important feedback to give others in your team, not just from the manager, but from all of you. Uh, being realistic with this is crucial. You may think that without the usual distractions, you can achieve far more, but this may mean for short periods you do, but breaks are still needed. Um, so schedule them in because you do need to refresh concentration and focus. They do need to be recharged. You need to give downtime to your head for you to be able to get that level of concentration and focus back again. And to be honest, um, I've been quite surprised, even shocked by the approach of some schools and how hard they are pressing students to study at uh, home. They're monitoring when they log on, when they log off, when they're getting work done. Um, and really those sort of tight schedules are counterproductive and often don't reflect what's normally done at the school anyway. There's breaks, there's distractions. One teacher can't be monitoring every single kid. So the kid can have a bit of a daydream, look out the window, pass a note, exchange looks and have a bit of a giggle. That's needed. You don't wanna be going on and on about it and do nothing but passing notes and giggling. But those breaks, that ability to log off from that do something else and then log back in is really necessary for the brain. Kids and adults function better with regular breaks, a sense of purpose and meaning in the work, and a bit of fun or laughter. The connectedness is really important. And in talking about that, you really also need to focus on self-care. If you're not used to working from home, it can be easy to forget your daily self-care routines. Getting ready, dressed in the morning is important to keep yourself feeling awake and like you're at work. Try to make sure that you remain hydrated through the day as this can increase productivity levels as well. Um, if you don't drink enough and you're dehydrated, your brain doesn't function as well. Furthermore, of course, a good night's sleep can help you feel focused and clear headed each day, which does nothing but help. With all of this, it's really important that you know yourself. How do you like to work? Do you work long stretches? Do you need lots of breaks? How do you work best? How can this fit in with your family if you're living in a family? Are you able to work in bed in PJs and be productive? Or is it best for you to set up a workspace, get into sort of work clothes and have different clothes and a different space where you relax and have home family time? As a student, I used to prefer to do my homework. I'm gonna sound like a, uh, a bit of a dork, but I used to actually stay in uniform and study because I was still in work, oh, sorry, school mode. I was still in homework mode. Then I could just get changed and the rest of the day was mine. Other people just couldn't wait to get out of the uniform and get out and run around and expend their energy. Then they could focus and concentrate. There's no right way. There's what works best for you and you're the one who knows it. So pay attention to what works for you. Um, obviously, if there's meetings, video meetings and things like that, that has to be in your timetable. But you might work better at night when the kids are at sleep. Let's look at um, scheduling. So some people like to stick to a, a strict start and end time for their days and do all they can to, to be rigid about that. And if structure helps you, that's great. Again, with regular breaks, um, get out of the, don't sit at your in your home office, go for a bit of a wander in the garden, go to the kitchen for your coffee break. 
I'd be saying the same things if you're at work, that if you need a break, don't just take it sitting at your desk and looking through your emails. That's not really uh, a proper break. Even 10 minutes away from the desk can make a difference, allowing you to relax, think of other th ideas. And often when you're in that um, other headspace, if you want, it's still going. The back of your head is still working and it gives you a break instead of pushing and pushing to come up with a solution. Going and looking at something else, the solution may pop up. That's why breaks and that are really important for many reasons. If possible, work hard to switch off in the evenings. Avoid looking at emails or messages and then, because that's, you don't want the time you're leading up to going to sleep, which is so important, for you to be stressed and pressured. Ensure you get out of the house once a day for exercise. Um, that can be bike ride, a run, um, just taking the dog for a, depending on the age of the dog, um, a brisk walk or just a bit of a, a, slow, a slow dawdle. Take in nature, take in the sun. Look for lovely things to really clear your head. If you've got woodlands nearby, go. At the moment, there are probably baby birds around at our local lakes. There's little um, Canadian, not Canadian geese, Egyptian geese ducklings. I always go to see them and see how they're growing. Lovely little things like that if you can get to the look at them um, without getting too close to anyone. So if you have children at home or other people working from home, you do really need to discuss things, as said before. It may not be possible for everyone to work at the same time. You may have to sort of tag team with a partner if you've got kids. So that one's looking after the kids, depending on their age, uh, while the other one is, is working. And you may um, do that for two hours off, two hours on. Um, but, the, you know, the, you'll work out what works for you, but have the discussion. Don't just assume people know what you need. Um, and don't assume you know what they need. Um, if you need a quiet environment, you may just need to put on headphones. Um, and it's not realistic to expect kids to be silent totally during the day when they're running around having a break themselves. So what can you do to give you the silence you might need? Well, use headphones um, instead of yelling at the kids. Um, try and sort of organise maybe they have doing art stuff while you're doing something serious, something that's quieter. Maybe it's not good for them to be exercising and you think, oh, now I think I'll write that really important report. It's probably not a good mix. Um, it might be necessary to do some work tasks in the evenings after the children have gone to bed, as I said, but do try and avoid it because you do need your lead up at least a half hour to an hour before you go to sleep to calm down and get your little um, waves, head, head waves, what are they, alpha waves and that sort of thing, going into a rest, rest mode so that it's easier for you to get to sleep because sleep is really important in unusual and challenging times. Goal setting. Now, some people work best when they have a goal to complete. They have deadlines. They're the ones who often write great to-do lists. They can ask their manager for completion dates and then choose to work in short break, bursts with plenty of breaks or work hard for a long stretch, then to take a much longer break. But they know what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. That's you, then set that up with your manager. It is important to make sure you switch off in those breaks. As we've said before, don't get tempted to carry on unless you've only got a tiny, tiny bit to finish because you do need to get out and about and get your head um, off things that are, can drain you or you can find yourself bored. But again, know yourself. You'll know some people can work and get a task done and then they can switch off entirely. Well, great. This approach can um, help with the working around the childcare if you have a if you want a schedule that you're keeping and if your partner and the kids can also have the same schedule that's that's useful um, but once again also especially as your children get older they really need to also learn what you're doing especially when you're working at home so they know when you need time to yourself 
The older they are, obviously, the more they'll be able to respect it. Read the little note on the door or whatever you do and know that it's your time to for either work or for your own time out, for your own mental health. And actually, that's a really important lesson for them to learn in any case, regardless of what's happening now. Children also need to know it's OK to take time out, that you value you and you value your time. That'll help them value themselves but it also helps them value you. So just an, an important thing for them to learn about parents and adults and other people in their world. Now, the trouble with this approach, if you're going to really work hard at it, is of course, maintaining focus. Now, focus is um, easy to talk about. We talk about being in the, the zone and all that, but it's really hard to achieve for a lot of people. So tips to help you focus is, if you want, um, your head can be in a really wide scatter and looking at all sorts of things and taking it all in. But when you actually need to write that report, it needs to be narrowed down. So what are the sort of things you can do to take your head down to that narrow focus point where you really are able to work on that report? So it might be best to have an intermediate, to ask your head to go from that to that, maybe too much. Some people can do it, a lot can't. So maybe you need to do tasks, check your emails, uh, reread what you've written so far, go back over the uh, articles, um, so just call a colleague to discuss it, do something to get your head moving towards what you need to focus on. You can refocus or reinterest you in the report or project, and you then for can re-engage with it and narrow your focus to really get down into it. Um, you can reward yourself. You can say, okay, I'm going to work on this for half an hour, and then I'm going to have a break. Um, that can actually be useful. Free your mind, do other tasks first. Um, again, if you know yourself, you'll know whether you're a person who needs to lead up to a, a focus task or one who needs to get it out of the way. Same with sort of difficult jobs you may not want to do. Do you just get it out of the way or do you do other things to sort of keep you in a good mood and then you focus on it? They're sort of things you can do. You can prepare your mind by at the end of your previous day is make a few notes about what needs to be done and how you might get around to doing it. And that's one of the first things you read in the morning to get you back into that mode, the work mode and the way of thinking that you need to be in. Now, bad days, we all have bad days. They'll occur in the office, they'll occur um, in your home office. They occur regardless of whether you're working or not. There are just days where we don't get a lot done. So can you move things around so that you're working on things that are easier? Can you write up notes? Can you do some light sort of research and draft a pamphlet or booklet rather than getting um, needing to focus and getting something difficult done? Because you're working from home, there may be more fluidity with that. There may be more, it may be easier to get that sort of uh, change of routine done. Now, the NADP membership consists of a wide diversity of autonomous professionals. And in this professional role, you're constantly adapting, learning and changing. And the, after working myself in Australia in the um, tertiary education system for eight years, it's constantly changing. Each new vice chancellor changes the rules, the government changes things. You have to constantly be we're looking at how you work, budget cuts and all that stuff. Now, this is just another thing you have to learn. It is a time of change, adaption. Everyone's got a very steep learning curve of how they work alone and how they work in a remote way with the students you're supporting. It's a steep learning curve at present. But there are some good sides to it. Some um, other staff have to learn how to engage with all their students in a way that can be more productive for the, disa um, the disabled students and staff that they work with. So there are some great leaps coming forward in how the universities are being forced by having to work remotely and go online and do things. They're having to also do things that may be beneficial to the students you're supporting. 
So as the employers have to think about adapting operations, you can actually influence the process. If you think about it, not only can you raise concerns about your individual situation, whether it relates to your own childcare challenges, feelings of isolation or connectivity or equipment challenges, um, and seeking appropriate support, just as you would if you were in um, a physical location. But in many ways, looking at it in another way, you've got excellent experience in working and supporting students who are on the outer. Maybe you have the experience, the ideas and skills in helping those students that you can actually help lead your wider team, your department, and the decision makers in your university or your college or your setup in such unusual times and challenging times. Maybe you're one of the ones best set up to take a lead and to give some suggestions and advice. So without sounding too Pollyanna about it, have a think about that as well. And um, yet again, thank you very much for listening. And uh, well, maybe we'll see you again. We'll see each other again soon. Cheers.